I'm going to talk about feeds and speeds, and I'm going to try to do it with uh, CAD CAM simulation, but the discussion is really about how do you troubleshoot issues. Now, we can get feed and speed charts, so if you're in, uh, let's just pick a dr drill, for instance, and I go in and uh, edit the, oops, come on, edit the operation, and we got a spindle RPM or surface feet per minute so this will self calculate if you know your SFM or you put in a hard number and then you have feed per revolution usually on these CAD cams they use per revolution the assumption it's uh, if you have the tool described correctly pretty much all drills are two flute but there are three flute drills but uh, so per revolution would be two thousands per two typically on most drills so it would calculate your plunge feed rate. You can kind of disregard the retract. Um, so it's kind of based on are you using a carbide drill or a high speed drill with cobalt and what material you're cutting. So if I take a chart here, I found this one online. This is a pretty good one. Uh, you can have some basics. So a uh, high speed in cobalt drills, low carbon steel. We have 1018 in class. So, also you might have a, a thing on the side here that says Brunel hardness. Um, if you if you if your material's not listed on this chart, if you know the hardness, I would select something similar. So, if you got Monel or something, it's not on this chart. Find something of similar hardness. All right, so here's your surface speed per minute. Now this one does not give you range. Some some give you a low or high range, but this one should get you in the ballpark. So if I'm saying conservative, I don't want to. I could start at like 70 surface feet and maybe use 110 as my limit. And then you get in the feed rate, which is really dependent on size of tool because if this one says three thousandths, uh, eighth inch drill, four thousandths. And that's feed per revolution, so that's, I always like to think in chip load per tooth. So that would be one and a half thou per tooth, two thou per tooth, four thou per tooth. So the bigger the tool, and it really it applies to end mills also. So you got to have some basic parameters to go by. And if I'm, especially if I'm new, or new machine, or... I've never cut this material before, I haven't done it in a while. I'm going to pick everything on the conservative side, knowing I can go higher. Now how can I increase if I'm running the job? If I'm on the job, I, I'm going to look at the, the feed and spindle overrides. If you're on a Haas machine, you got the plus 10% button, or you have the uh, hand wheel button you can crank up. On Fanuc machines, you got a little knob that you can go, I think, 150% more on the spindle and 150% more on the feed rate. So we got, if I got some room, and I would probably even reduce the feed rate, not the spindle RPM. As long as I know my RPMs in the range of the material, it should all work. It's really dependent on feed rate. So I would reduce the feed rate by 50%. That's no problem. Going slow is not going to hurt anybody. I want to have... I want to have, I think, like a, a prototype machine is I want to make the first part good, not the third one or the tenth one. Um, and, it, and if it's all successful, I can go, like maybe I'm at 50, I'll go to 100, or if I'm peck drilling a bunch of holes, I can do first one cut like butter, I can hear it, I can look at the load meter, all that kind of take all that stuff in, go to the next hole, go to the next hole. Gee, it's cutting great. Let's try 120%. Let's try 130%. Geez, it cuts really easy. I'm Now I'm at, uh, instead of 10 inches a minute, I'm at 14 inches a minute. That's like 40% more. Um, do I have more, can I go more, more RPM? So if I'm going up successfully, it tends to work better than backing off to, to get to success. You have 15 like, minutes left of computer time. Sorry about that. I'm getting kicked off my computer, but uh, um, instead of backing off to become successful. So that's my, my theory on that. So like, let's just talk about holes, right? You got drills and 
Number one, is the hole to size, right? Is it, is it tapered? If it's tapered, it's either the driller is swinging out further, and as it gets in the hole, it acts like a drill bushing, and it finally starts drilling on size as it gets inside because the, the drill is being captured. Now, if it's swinging out, do I have a big enough spot for the drill, or do I have no spot? Am I trying to do it with a, uh, a long drill or a screw machine drill? Now, it's like in a lathe, we're, we're always trying to use screw machine drills so we could skip an operation of prep. But you might be boring the hole afterwards anyway, so you're just trying to remove material. But if you try to be really good, like your hole has to be 2,000 tolerance, you want to make sure it's prepped properly. The drill is running true, which means you might have to get an indicator out on the machine. In, in the machine, make sure it's not going like this. Even carbon end mills, it may be, you're using collets, you got to like clean the collets all the time before you assemble, you're more likely going to have success with that. If you're just swapping them out and there's chips in there and the collet's a little wiggly. Uh, we used to have a little wash station sometimes. We had a lot of critical stuff, so we said, let's just clean the collets every time. The collet, not the collet. And a little, even in a little bit of coolant which is going to clean it out, blow out the collet and everything, assemble. So I don't really have to check every time. If I'm really on critical stuff, I'm probably going to check. If I'm using carbide reamers, carbide reamers don't like to bend. They're going to oversize um, if it's swinging out at all. The shorter the reamer, it's going to do the same thing. Uh, drills wander. You know, the tip of the drill might not be biting in good enough. So you got to kind of troubleshoot from a machinist's point of view. If you got end mills, end mills could be bending, so you got taper. The longer end mills versus short end mills, the longer the holder, it, you know, it's all basics. You know, it's, it's, you're trying to stay rigid and everything's bending a little bit. So you got your tool and you got your work holding. You know, if the part's sticking way up out of it, it's trying to bend the part. As you're clamping it, it might be blowing up or down. So just kind of take all those into account. And kind of look at your problem and kind of break down the solution. If, I have, if I'm getting good surface finish, that's number one. I can visually look at that. You know, face mill looks good. All right. Roughing, end mill, roughing. I take a look at each operation. Roughing end mill looks good. The load meter wasn't buried. It sounded okay. It might be a noisy shop. I can't hear everything. All right. Uh, or if I'm running it going, okay, I had backed it off. The load meter was at 20, it, you know, so I can go to 100% and my load meter is at 40. Cutting great. Let it go. Then I look at the finishing tool. Now, the finishing tool has really got to look good on the finish, so we don't have to go flying around with that because we're trying to get a good finish. But you might be going way too conservative and going like, like this, but it could be going like this, right? This is where your manual machining guys come in. They they do everything by feel, and they have no feed rate. You know they have they can control RPM but not feed rate. You have it drilling <laughs> or cranking the handles. You're doing it by how it looks and how much you can do. With CNC, you gotta like translate that manual kind of thinking into how do I control it with this? And you can always start with some numbers. So. But as far as finding solutions, they're pretty basic solutions that apply to all machining. So, as far as like what your issues are, you know, if you're if you're breaking tools right off the bat, number one thing I would look at is RPM. Am I spinning them too fast? You know, it's like if I'm driving down the highway and my tractor trailer tire, which is this big, and my boat trailer are going 70 miles an hour, you can't spin the track to tear the tire as many RPM as the little boat trail. You know, the smaller tools need to run faster than the bigger tools and vice versa. The bigger tools need to run slower. I, I have that in my head from manual machining, but we have a feed and speed chart here. So if I go to, let me pull up the other one I had. You have 10 uh, minutes left of computer time. I hope that wasn't too loud on your ears. So I get the same copy. This had, actually, I'm going to put this in my curriculum. So right up in here, I got uh, low carbon steel. This is carbide. 
So I think it's less than, yeah, less than or, or equal to 120. Oh, that's Brunel hardness, sorry. I'm on. Surface speed is 250, and I'm going quarter inch drill, fourth out per tooth. That's my starting parameter. Yeah. If I'm using, uh, look at it, said Brunel hardness, this is getting harder now, so you can't run it as fast. And they're actually giving you their tool number. This is the Morse tool company, so like, I don't really care about that. I'm going to go with the probably the more conservative one if I'm cutting like 1040 steel or P20. Oh, P20 can actually, yeah, this is up in the 250 Brunel hardness range. I'm, I'm more a Rockwell guy. Like it says Rockwell C, so uh, hard, hardened tools. They're now we're down to 60 feet per minute for hardenable tool steels. Your like A series, O series, stuff like that. Free machining stainless 304 moderate. I tell you, there's a difference between 303 and 304. 304 is a little gummier, I think, and it has to run slower. Difficult machining stainlesses. Sometimes the stainlesses benefit from specific drills and specific end mills with a different helix on it. So, anyway, so I'm going to cut this off at the 11 minute mark, and this might talk about feed and speeds. And so if you're in Fusion, it's all your settings in here. So personally, I like to go by surface feet per minute. And I have to know if I'm running like aluminum, I don't want to make sure I don't go beyond what the machine can do as far as RPM. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.